Welcome back everyone. My name's Hobby Man Pete and this is Hobby News, the channel where we give you all the quick info you might need to pick up a new hobby. Today's top story, baking. When talking about this, we're going to be going over three key points. One, how to get started. Two, your budget. And three, the potential for growth. Let's get started. Now, when it comes to getting started, I always like to recommend that you start with, you know, boxed packaged uh, goods from the grocery store. This is going to include things like Pillsbury or Betty Crocker cakes or, you know, cupcakes, muffins, or maybe even pancakes. Uh, the reason being is because you can do them with relative ease and cost. Uh, and even if you're not a big fan of what you might be creating, maybe the sugar content's too high, it'll at least expose you to what it feels like to use those ingredients like flour, milk, eggs, um, and all your, and practicing mixing and you know seeing how things work in an oven. Now, granted, things like pancakes, you know, you I would recommend still testing them out because even though it's not technically baking you are still practicing with those types of ingredients and you're measuring out you know different levels of how much flour you need and how it'll overall work so definitely a good place to start and then once you get more experience you can elevate that in another step now the next thing we want to talk about is the budget now when it comes to items like the boxed packaged goods um the good news is that they are relatively cheap running about five to ten dollars for you know some betty crocker cake mix and the other aspect of it that's great is that a lot of those times those pack, you know, prepackaged uh, baked items uh, will only require you to have a few ingredients of your own. Those usually just being water, oil, some sort of vegetable oil like canola oil, and eggs. Maybe or maybe not it's milk, but that depends on what you're baking. Always read the you know box of what what it asks for. And you know, thankfully, those are usually common household ingredients that a lot of you know people are and you're going to already have in your fridge and if not well those are still relatively cheap so if you want to start practicing then you're running about you know 20 25 dollars to get everything you might need and the next thing you're going to want to make sure though you have is some sort of baking tin um you know just to make sure you can actually bake something in uh this is you know and, and if you don't have one the good news is that an average little cake tin can cost you again about 10 to 15 dollars so you know, you put that together and you're still looking at a, you know, pretty good range of, you know, under $50 if you want to just try a baking thing. Now, the biggest challenge is going to be if you don't have an oven. Well, have no fear because if you don't have an oven, you can still look up how to make things in the microwave like a mug cake. If you don't have that either, maybe it's time to start reevaluating your life choices. And lastly, the thing we want to talk about next is the potential for growth. And just like baked goods rise in the oven, so too does the, the potential for growth in this hobby. Once you finally feel comfortable enough with those boxed prepackaged goods, it's time to move on to something a little more complex. Now, usually I would recommend that you still stick to something simple, but this time using your own personal bought flour and sugar, etc., instead of that prepackaged material, and you know try re recreating the same thing, maybe another small cake or something. But if that doesn't suit your fancy, then it's time to really start looking into some recipes, either picking up a good baking cookbook or just looking up on some baking shows and seeing kind of what you want to maybe try next. Maybe you want to do some muffins, maybe you want to try scones, or maybe you even want to try making your own bread, but that's a whole other thing. And once you finally feel comfortable with it, then again, it's just, you know, with any other craft, it's time to elevate it as far as you want it to go. Um, and as long as you come to love it, and if you have the patience for it, then soon you'll be able to create things like this, and this, and this, all on your own one day. So, all I say, go for it and try it out, and it's always good to have another uh, skill, especially when it comes to making food for yourself, because who doesn't love food? Now, one thing you just want to keep in mind when it comes to the potential for growth is that baking is very much a science, and it requires a lot of precision, for measuring out exact levels, of, you know, comes milliliters, grams, whatever, whatever ingredient you're working with needs to be precise. And the next thing you're going to need is patience for when things inevitably don't work out. And, you know, any true pâtissier would tell you is that they're going to be failing a lot. And you're going to want to be able to sure that, you know, if once you fail, it's not over for you. And all you have to do is just get up and try again. 
Well, that's all we have here for today here at Hobby News. We hope you were able to learn something new and just maybe you'll become the next best pastry chef. Be sure to tune in next time to see what hobby we cover next and write down in the comments below. So, what do you do?